Hey everybody, Corey Taylor here. Uh, just here at the Minotaur in uh, Melbourne, and uh, I'm about to get my serious geek on. Well, let's go this way. I've been collecting comics since I was five years old, um, and I haven't stopped. Like even though I go out on the road and whatnot, I, when I, every time I come back, I go out, I catch up on all the titles and stuff that I, uh, that I loved as a kid. But the great thing about that now is that they have things called trades, which is like a collected, collected edition of like several different uh, issues. You can run out and get like a whole, like like four or five comics all at once that collect and like carry on that story. Not only can you get really caught up in trades and whatnot, but you get like books like this, which are devoted to the artwork itself. So it's not just about the stories, but it's also about the artists, you know, which were kind of the unsung heroes for the longest time, you know, like a lot of them didn't get enough credit where credit was due. So you would have things, so these are things that really kind of go back and celebrate the artwork of uh, the guys who who really put the work in. It's uh, it's it's cool. This whole industry now has really cemented itself and started to take care of itself. It's never let the ass fall out of it anymore. Like it it starts to take care of itself and never lets it get too far. It's like the horror movie genre, the Gorgon. Which God, I haven't seen this movie since I was. 10 years old. It's a very ob obscure Hammer film. And uh, actually there's a really killer Hammer film box set that you can get um, that looks like a, a, a big coffin. And uh, it's got a really cool uh, history of uh, Hammer kind of documentary that goes with it, but it's really cool. And you can find it on Blu-ray, which I definitely recommend. But then you got stuff like that. You got stuff like, I mean, who wants Jaws 2 on Blu-ray? Come on. I mean, it just, well, I mean, besides me, obviously. The Godzilla section, which I can remember seeing this when I was, I used to live in a city called Clear Lake, Iowa. The local theater would have Godzilla um, marathons every Sunday. So, I, you know, you could pay 50 cents. My mom would drop me off for the day, and I would just sit and watch Godzilla movies all day long. And this was like one of my favorites was, uh, Godzilla versus Megalodon. It was the first clash of like, this is what has fed every fanboy for 30, 40 years as far as like what we want from our big crossover movies. It fostered in me a, uh, a taste for collecting cool stuff like this. Even if nobody else understood it, it made sense to me, you know. That's a fucking cool bag. That's pretty badass. Sorry, I freak out all the time. <laughs> that is a European shoulder bag. It's a man purse. Let's just get with it. It's 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 a man purse. It's fine. I collect a lot of action figures. Some of the newer ones that are coming out are so elaborate and and so cool. But some of the best ones are on this this company called Reaction Figures. I got all of these, like, and this is one of my favorites. It's when I was a kid, I wanted to be Snake Plissken so bad. Remember you're talking about this? I used to run around my, uh, I used to run around my apartment buildings, my apart apartment complex with a fucking eye patch because I was a maniac. And uh, yeah, it was just, I just thought Snake Plissken was the, just the baddest human on the planet, man. So yeah. <laughs> three Stooges, man. Who'd have thought in a million years there would be Three Stooges action figures, and I want them. So, I've been collecting action figures actually since 1991, and uh, I have about 50 boxes full of them still in the package. There's a thin line between hoarder and collector, all right? Just saying. This is how nerdy it gets. I have, <laughs> I have an alien one of these which is pretty dope. It's an ice cube tray. And the cool thing is, is that it makes regular aliens, it makes uh, the, the queen, and then it makes the face huggers. So, yeah, so you can have all... <laughs> Don't judge me. There's an art 
to buying t-shirts at, at a comic shop because nine times out of ten they're going to be nipple chasers like really bad um, because they're made of this they're made of the, the heavy metal fabric okay it's it's the really coarse t-shirts that will just destroy your fronts all of them because nine times out of ten you're going to be walking around in that t-shirt all day and it's just it's going to be doing this the whole time and you're going to look down and you're going to have bloody spouts where your nipples were so you have to be very very choosy this is all practical advice man i don't know why i don't know why this is so funny oh my god if they have that in a large that is coming home with daddy I don't think they do though. Oh, that's gonna bum me out. It's, um, uh, ooh, ooh, ooh. That's coming with us. Come on, man. The Doctor Who section, which is uh, kind of special for me for a lot of reasons. Um, I grew up watching Doctor Who in Iowa. Iowa Public Television has actually shown Doctor Who the longest. Um, so the, literally the year I was born, they started showing Doctor Who in Iowa, and I grew up watching this, and I grew up loving it. Like, Tom Baker was my doctor, and he, I just, I, I have this affinity for long scarves now, that it's just weird and probably uncomfortable, but I don't care, because I love it. I was approached by some of the producers and uh, a couple of the directors on the series, um, who grew up listening to my music, and uh, they asked me if I would provide the scream for a character that was on the last season called the Fisher King. And uh, to which I readily jumped at the, you know, at the, the, the chance to do so. Where is it, where is it, where is it, where is it? So this is the, that's the monster that I, pres uh, you know, I provided the scream for. And it was part of uh, Under the Lake and Before the Flood. It was a two-parter. I, uh, so I went down, uh, they took us through the Dr. Hugh Museum, and then they took us through BBC Wales where they shoot it, uh, like in the, in the sound stages. And I got to go in the TARDIS and I lost my mind. I was touching everything and just, it just there's so many buttons and cool things. Like I was just like, just messing with it. I just had to touch everything. And, uh, it was cool, man. Like in the, yeah, I didn't get to meet um, Peter Capaldi or anybody like that, but just being a part of that whole process and then, uh, and then seeing it on the screen, like, and then my name in the credits, I was like, oh, so goddamn killer.